on Worcester News tonight, more snow is on the way. And while it may only be a few inches, the city is reminding people they still need to move their cars. Plus, the latest on Michael Cohen's testimony before Congress. Why some say his message may be received differently for Democrats and Republicans. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Olivia Lemon. Snow is moving into the area and it could make for a slippery commute tomorrow morning. In Worcester, a parking ban is in effect as of 6 p.m. this evening. Meteorologist Tim Kelly has more on how much snow we can expect. The pattern is loaded. Storms continue to come in off the Pacific. We've got storms coming in off the Central and South Pacific. We've got a system in the Gulf of Mexico and what's coming in right now is a relatively weak wave of low pressure on a warm front, but it's in the 70s in Tennessee and it's only about 5 to 10 degrees in southeastern Canada, so there's quite a, a temperature gradient to work with here. Warm air crashing into cold air and we are purely in the cold air, so it can wring out any moisture. So say we have snow in the air from about 7 o'clock through midnight, probably 2 or 3 inches, and then you go from midnight through about 5 a.m., another 2 or 3 inches, so we'll go with two and a half and two and a half, about five inches of really dry snow uh, that should be fairly easy to remove, but it is enough that the plows are out and there'll be delays and postponements tomorrow at uh, 6 a.m. It's still snowing, it's only 15 to 20, and then it lets up. It stays relatively gray and there could be some clouds still in the sky, noontime, 24, 25. We may get up to 30 downtown, the hills will stay in the 20s, and there are still flurries around, but it's generally it's overnight, five inches of snow, and then a lot to watch in the 10-day forecast in a few minutes. All right, thank you, Tim. Close to 3,000 cars have already been towed this winter, and with another parking ban in place, the number could rise. The city puts bans in place to help plows and first responders get through during storms, but both say with cars in the way, it makes their job more difficult. Our Brittany Schaefer joins us now with more. Brittany. Well, Olivia, no snow yet, but the winter parking ban is in effect with significant snowfall expected. The city says people who don't follow the ban could face a costly consequence. <laughs> Dorenzo Towing and Recovery are gearing up for a busy night. Anything that we do gets busier when the snow falls. As the road conditions decline, we escalate. The company will be busy plowing snow, but they could also be towing cars. Dorenzo's Jim Cahill says they contract with the city of Worcester during winter parking bans and the towing numbers are always high. When parking bans go in effect, obviously our volume increases greatly during that period of time. Probably eight tow vehicles in addition to our heavy wrecker and recovery equipment that are out there. As long as they're not paying attention, unfortunately, somebody's going to move them. And, um, you know, it's obviously at the request of the city and and the Worcester Police Department. Police do go around with DPW and identify cars that they can't contact the owner and tow the cars. The parking ban is in effect as of 6 p.m. Wednesday night. According to Worcester Police, more than 2,600 vehicles have been towed so far this winter. Lieutenant Sean Murtha says it makes plow drivers' jobs difficult and also impacts first responders. I think the biggest thing is just if the plows can't do their job, then it makes it tougher for us because we have to get to addresses. If there's an emergency going on, you know, we have to get there. So if there's a ton of snow, it's always tougher to do our jobs and uh, can definitely delay response. It's a public safety issue more than anything else. If the plows can keep the roads wide enough and open the way they need to be, first response and emergency response vehicles, it, it impedes their ability to do the job they need to do. Last year, the city towed more than 3,000 cars. Murtha says this year is looking similar with more snow likely on the way. Live in downtown Worcester, Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. Some Worcester residents say a street in the city is not passable after a snowstorm. City Councilor George Russell says he hears complaints every winter. The calls stem from what residents on Butler Street say it's improper plowing and sanding in the neighborhood or lack thereof completely. Neighbors say the incline is difficult to drive in winter weather and snow in the road can last for days. But as Councilor Russell points out, Butler Street is currently stuck in a mapping issue. It's in Quinsic Village but it's on a map to be serviced by some trucks that usually service the rest, rest of their route is on Providence Street. And Worcester has 500 mile, 500 plus miles of streets to clean every storm. Russell asked the city manager to consider rerouting city vehicles to take care of all city roads.
President Trump's former attorney Michael Cohen testifying before Congress today, saying the president is a con man and a cheat. As our Roz and Flaherty explains, Cohen is detailing his dealings with Mr. Trump before and during the campaign and after he went to the White House. The man who once said he would take a bullet for President Donald Trump doesn't hold back as he testifies before Congress. I know what Mr. Trump is. He is a racist. He is a con man. And he is a cheat. President Trump's former attorney, Michael Cohen, will soon begin a three-year prison sentence for campaign finance violations, tax evasion, and lying to Congress. Nathan Angelo is a political science professor at Worcester State University. He says the reaction to Cohen's testimony seems to depend on party lines. Certainly the Republicans uh, in Congress at least think that he's attempting to try to do this as a way to sort of limit the impact of the legal system on him, maybe to shorten his sentence. From the Democrats, uh, the Democrats in Congress trust what he's saying and believe that this, uh, that some of the allegation against him, allegations against him are serious enough to um, potentially have some consequences for him. Cohen spoke about a number of issues like hush money payments, his loyalty to the president, and possible Russian collusion in the 2016 presidential election. WTAG talk show host Jim Polito says it's difficult to believe what Cohen says is true because he has already lied and doesn't believe this is the best guy for Congress to bring forward. I think this is kind of a personal thing for him. He's trying to get a little bit of a reputation. Um, at some point, he's going to write a book and try to make some money off of this. I think he's a guy who understands I'm going to jail, and uh, I want to try to do something to save my reputation. Polito says Cohen calling Trump a racist isn't something new. Angelo says the name calling is a way to attack and hurt President Trump's brand for the future. Which could have uh, an impact in the upcoming uh, 2020 election. President Trump tweeted earlier today from Vietnam saying Cohen is lying. Cohen is scheduled to report to prison on May, on May 6th. Live in Worcester, Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. Meanwhile, President Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un met at their second nuclear summit in Vietnam. After a brief one-on-one -on -one meeting, the president express, expressed optimism he can get Kim to stop all nuclear testing and eventually denuclearize the Korean Peninsula. But some lawmakers are doubtful it will happen. Jennifer Johnson has the latest. In their first one-on-one -on -one meeting of their second nuclear summit, President Trump expressing optimism. He can convince Kim Jong-un to stop all nuclear testing and eventually abandon his nuclear program. I thought the first summit was a great success, and I think this one hopefully will be equal or greater than the first. But intelligence reports show after that first summit, Kim held on to his vast nuclear arsenal. This time in Vietnam, the president is trying to convince Kim to sign on to a verifiable, enforceable agreement or face the threat of more punishing sanctions. The president using flattery to help seal the deal. I think that your country has tremendous economic potential, unbelievable, unlimited. And I think that you will have a tremendous future with your country, a great leader. At a dinner later, everybody having a good time. The president once again talking about his close bond with the volatile leader. Our relationship is a very special relationship. As some experts and lawmakers warn, this dictator should never be trusted. Charm alone is not going to get him to give up his uh, nuclear weapons. Uh, and the president needs to understand that. The president hoping for an international win as his former lawyer, Michael Cohen, dominates the news back home. But supporters believe this second summit is at the very least a step in the right direction. And that was Jennifer Johnson reporting. A poster recently removed by students at Abby Kelly Foster Charter School is now hanging back up. The students removed the poster of Colin Kaepernick after some took offense to the painting. Students told us the poster was put up as part of a Black History Month celebration, but some felt Kaepernick was associated with police brutality. The poster is now back in its spot after an open dialogue between students and administration. Mass DOT back in Worcester tonight discussing the 
the future look of the Kelly Square Improvement Project. The design meeting will look at the proposed peanut design moving forward, which will swap the direction of Millbury and Harding Streets. There will be no left turn onto Vernon Street from the 290 West ramp, along with other changes. Mass DOT says the purpose of tonight's hearing is to provide the public with the opportunity to become fully acquainted with the proposed project. The meeting is until 8 p.m. at Worcester Technical High School. Proposed state legislation would ban organized tackle football through the seventh grade. Some research so shows players who start playing before the age of 12 may suffer from memory loss and depression, but other doctors say banning the whole sport together may not be necessary. Albert Chandler Walsh joins us now to explain. Chandler. Olivia, West Boylston defensive coordinator Derek Robbins coached set coached youth football for seven years before coaching high school. He says the bill seems less like a conversation and more like a cease and desist. Defensive coordinator Derek Robbins runs an off-season weight session for West Boylston High School football. He says almost all of his team played youth football and they need it to play the game safely. They need to learn all of the full contact activity that goes on in the game. And if they don't get that at a young age, they're certainly going to be in a tough situation showing up here as freshmen. A proposed bill would ban tackle football in Massachusetts for children in grades 7 and below. Any team or league in violation would be fined. I understand the need to have a conversation about collision sports in general, but that's not what's happening here. They're targeting one sport and one sport alone. The bill, also called the No Hits Act, is based on research of long-term consequences from repetitive head impacts while the brain is still developing. Co-sponsor Representative Paul Schmid says, as always, we want to come back to the guiding principle here, and that is what is right for our kids. UMass Memorial Dr. Theodore Macnow says repeat concussions increase the risk of suffering another. Some data that, you know, with, with repeated head injuries throughout your life can lead to this chronic traumatic encephalopathy, which is what's all over the news these days in these NFL players. Um, it is not well figured out sort of how many hits you need. Mac now says head injury awareness is important, but banning a sport may not be the way to go. Maybe for that kid, the, the smaller, you know, the small risk of head injury pales in comparison to the teamwork, the um, stick to the exercise skills. Robbins says rule changes and a better understanding of concussions have already made the game safer. Certain drills that were being, you know, done when I was playing back in the 80s and early 90s have been outlawed. One Central Mass state rep signed the bill. Representative Kimberly Ferguson says she's taking input from citizens into consideration and consulting with medical experts. There's an online petition against the bill with more than 7,000 signatures. Live in the newsroom, Chandler Walsh, Worcester News Tonight.